Howdy folks and welcome to the Daily Coin. My name is Rory and today is Friday, September the 23rd, 2016. And I have the very distinct honor and great pleasure of welcoming to the show for the first time, Mr. Joseph Grasso, who is the Executive Chairman, CEO, and President of Golden Arrow Resources with operations in Argentina. And you can find them listed on the TSX under the symbol GRG.V on the FSE Stock Exchange under the symbol GAC and on the OTC market under the symbol G-A-R-W-F. Joe, welcome to the show. Rory, I feel honored uh, to be exposed and trying to tell my story to your audience. And uh, as I said, it's a great honor to be able to share. Well, we're glad you're here, Joe. We certainly appreciate you taking time out to uh, share with us today. And, And I understand that you guys are working with uh, Silver Standard, or they're looking at your properties. And if you would, just give us a description of what's going on there. The economics look attractive enough for that uh, non- non-exercising the option that uh, Silver Standard has uh, in, in any measure, in any measure that you look at it, they have a, a, a closed infrastructure going nowhere and no production, which we cost up to $300 million to erect it today. Mm-hmm. We have a 200 and, and we have a 244 million ounces of uh, silver, which uh, uh, could convert into keeping the present infrastructure busy for another nine years on top of the six which have gone by already. They didn't find us, uh, we found them. So too bad that we're so close to them and they, the major companies simply do not have a, an affinity for finding, finding new resources in the community. So we're only 20 miles away and we come up with uh, uh, this huge discovery and getting bigger. That's so enough. now that we have discovered it, now that we've discovered each other, I am just inviting the listener to basically say, if I had $300 million infrastructure that I had to close, worth nothing at 5,000 meters of altitude. And on the other side, if it is a, a discovery 20 miles away, which needs what they got, which is shutting down. I would say that the, uh, the the combination of the two is such a, an incredible synergy is the thing, an incredible yes. synergy that, that we we seem to to need them to avoid raising the three hundred million dollars. We don't have to raise it. We have the infrastructure, and them, which were dead in the water, no place to go, finding another nine years of production, which is at their doorstep with a couple more decades regionally, all in all, this uh, young elephant is growing very rapidly into a very interesting elephant, very economic, with all the risks of mining being from hundreds of them down to one. And uh, I can tell you that 90% of... uh, the importance is the environment the report that we have now tabled with the community and the Mineria for a social license. So uh, an environment report, it's really meaning to getting a blessing from the community and the impacted, the impacted community by the project. Joe, if we can, I'd like to change gears. I, I, I wanted to ask you, Joe, yeah, exactly. wanted to ask you, Joe, uh, with the Federal Reserve failing once again to raise rates, even though they had said that they were going to raise interest rates as many as four times in 2016, the loss of all their credibility aside, does the Federal Reserve have the ability to raise rates? And from your perspective, what impact would that have on the overall U.S. economy and possibly the global economy. 
the only thing I can say that uh, it is unbelievable that uh, an institution that has the respect in the eyes of the world, that for a quarter percent that they play like games in a like a children in the backyard of a church or, or synagogue or whatever. Uh, I, I just do not understand anything. I'm going to do it. We're going to say it, and I'm going to be telling you in September 21st. So uh, it doesn't matter that it's in July and you guys are going to go up every day uh, thinking what uh, what they, they, they're going to be doing. They're going to be raising. They're not going to be raising. And what really annoys me that there is a, a quarter of one percent can create so much debility into the market and uncertainty. I is really I'm astounded. So I'm astounded uh, at the irresponsible, at the irresponsible attitude that uh, uh, the leading country in the world that I'm incredibly fond of and I love it. Uh, I don't have relatives just in the United States, in, in in Argentina. I have plenty of them in New Jersey. Anyway, I must say that uh, as a great admirer of that country of yours, uh, I, I I don't feel that the United States and its citizen needs to play in games like that. They have lost a little bit of exactly. Uh, yeah, it does, it does seem like they are. It does seem like they're playing games and. Uh, which is why I said that it, it looks like they're losing all their credibility. I mean, you're in Argentina and you can see it. You can see that it's that it's nothing more than a game. And they come out and they say, we're going to raise interest rates. We're not going to raise interest rates. And they, were, they said back last December that they were going to raise interest rates on four occasions. Here it is at the end of September and they haven't haven't done it once. And I don't think that they can. Well, no. now they basically now they now they're starting the same uh, the same symphony. They're starting again that by the end of the year there may be a raise. By right. the end of the year there may be a raise. And again, we're back in the backyard, uh, hiding something behind our back and saying, "I know what it is, but I won't tell you. I know what it is, but one day I'll tell you." Nice game. Yeah. Nice game. Thank you. Yeah, it's like but, children. The second, the, the, sec, the second part, the second part of your question uh, excites me is that if that would be the case, that they're going to be raising uh, the funds with the economy in the United States, that would then go from uh, from becoming uh, ridiculous to be be just undescribable the responsibility uh, in uh, raising the the value of the dollar higher uh, at a time when America needs to sell its product. It needs to be competitive. And uh, let's turn the economy around. The hard metal, in that case, would be the winner because uh, if uh, interest rates are going to be raising the, the price or the, the currency of the United States to raise it dramatically or, or to whatever the degree, I, I think that the competitiveness that the United States will be losing so much and the industry, I think, is going to be tougher to recover or longer to recover, which that will not make that much sense. Currency today in the world is losing a lot of, uh, a lot of attraction, a lot of the luster without any substance or support. So we might end up being returning to gold base or some other value base for our, for our currency. We need to. To, to, regain, to regain the confidence. Yes. To regain the confidence. Hugo Salinas Price, he met with the leaders of Greece a few years ago and explained to them how they could get out of the euro with all of their economic problems and, and explain to them how they could reintroduce their local currency, the drachma, and back it with silver. And silver, and you mentioned uh, gold back uh, currency, and I wanted to ask you about uh, silver and gold. Silver and gold both have been moving to the upside for all of this year. And just this week, we are seeing silver once again challenge the $20 level. And how do you see uh, silver in particular moving how do you see how do you see it performing 
for the rest of this year and into 2017, do you see it up? Do you see it down sideways? Or, or do you have a, a longer term vision regarding the performance of silver? At the moment, it looks pretty exciting. I think right now, if you're not happy with anything, buy gold and buy silver. That's the attitude. Uh, so there's plenty of, uh, of us fearing the economy. When is it going to turn around? What the question mark, question mark, question mark that they're coming up and they're worrying everybody. So everybody's saying, uh, let's make an escape. Let's buy, let's buy silver. Let's buy gold. After all, they are uh, metal of panic, especially gold. Now, silver, I'm not so worried for two reasons. The two reasons are the following. One, in 1980, uh, 15 ounces of of, uh, silver were equivalent to one ounce of gold. We are now 69 point something, let's call it 70 ounces of silver, make up one ounce of gold. It's gone so, so extreme that never mind the 15% in 1980, it's like about 30%, 30 to 1. Let's talk about no, 25 to 1. Yep. Or 40 to 1 to 1. Yep. Doesn't matter which number you take, that the ratio has got to be established soon. Uh, I don't know how soon, but we love that has to be reestablished. The second important part is that um, silver, in addition to to what gold does, has the industrial the industrial demand. The industrial demand is is at least fifty percent of its production. Production is uh, dwindling. At least fifty percent. Production is. So the so I, I I would say that the two the two things which are reigning supreme are really the difference of gold. Gold is going to do extremely well, and silver by being silver will be doing better than gold. If you look at the increase in uh, in, in silver in a, within the last year, it is probably the most spectacular uh, in in, uh, in in the two in the two commodities, silver and gold. Really, really spectacular. Yes. Rory, uh, please help me again. Help, have me again uh, on your uh, program. I love being, it seems like I've established uh, a new family, and I oh, I have uh, a lot of new stories to tell you. More oh. more of the crony stories. Okay. <laughs> more, of the, more of the colorful thing. Yes. That happened in the mining business. Well, and uh, most importantly, most importantly, we just want to concentrate on uh, an elephant called an arrow, chinchilla, that is uh, really doing well. Deserves deserves attention. Yes, it does. I mean, Golden Arrow. I mean, you guys have multiple projects in various stages in Argentina, but your main focus is on the chinchilla silver mining project. I mean, and that makes perfect sense because you have. Well, we we are simultaneously, you know, we're simultaneously uh, starting a very aggressive program on uh, on a new project, uh, which uh, we've been fenced in by by Barrick staking around us. So it is a very worthwhile project. Yes, uh, I mean, you, and you've already found. Or there's a hundred million ounces of silver and 155 million ounces of silver equivalent in your measured and indicated categories, along with 44 million ounces and 90 million ounces in the inferred category. I mean, these are massive deposits that you're looking at. And it seems like that you guys are in a, in a really good position right now with those two and Barrick knocking on your door and how, what, what is the next, what is your next step as far as the chinchilla project is concerned? Well, there are two. One is uh, the government giving permission to exploit uh, to, for production. Okay. And two would be that the uh, silver standard, uh, we say yes to the option that we have now agreed and, created a detailed, comprehensive agreement between us. So, so as far as I'm concerned, in the worst case scenario, 
he put the word not and go. Another cannot think of the reason why. Uh, there are other ways for us to develop Chinchilla. Chinchilla is a, a project on its own uh, with a lot of following and interest that uh, would come should uh, circumstances not materialize. Yeah, I, I would think somebody would, would step up to that in, in a heartbeat. I mean, that's like I said, that's a lot of silver in the ground. The other thing in, in, in finale here, we'd like to remind you that, uh, you and uh, the listener that when I first came here 23 years ago, I staked, I staked the project contiguous with Pascualana, contiguous with Villadero. We have we we have about 250, 200, 214,000 hectares of property that we own, fully paid, no nothing to pay except the compliances, which is pretty minimum. We have a, we have really a wealth of a well located and promising. So we will not run out of a good project to to explore. In addition to being a partner uh, with Chinchilla production yearly cash flow. That's a very good thing, Brody. I want to. I want to. I want to thank you and, and your listener. I uh, I beg uh, your listeners to forgive my bad English. Uh, still, still uh, is a second language for me, but uh, I don't do too bad. I no, you did great. You've done. You've listen. been doing great. We we touched on a gold back currency. I mean, what do you think? What is from your perspective, uh, Joe? What is the likelihood of a return to a gold-backed currency, and why do you why do you think that? Well, if you if you don't mind waiting, I'm going to get to my crystal ball. Okay. <laughs> I, think, I think it's very likely. I think that the mood uh, generally is looking for more substance in a currency that we we use every day. So uh, the only thing I can say that, in my opinion, I wish. And I think it's very likely that we will return to values that will support our currencies, which uh, includes gold, obviously. Yes. Is, is that an answer? That's a great answer. Did you answer? Did, okay. I mean, seriously, Joe, that's, but, that's really good. Um, it, it, I, 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 I feel I'm much likely, uh, a lot like your, uh, your listener. Your listeners uh, are in the same boat as I am. We, uh, we think, we think, we think. And we would like to see our dollars, uh, our, our, our currency that we work hard for, uh, to have a much more value than just paper. Right. Yes, we would. Or, or, or the, or, or, or the frailty of, of productivity that uh, you know fluctuates, goes up and down. And anyway, uh, America has got to get back to work. We we delegated, we exported too many of our jobs. Yes. Let's get back to brass tacks and let's let's put America to work. Let's do. I like it. I like it, Joe. You and just I, have to see yourself or to schedule me for another interview and spend a more wonderful time with your great listeners. I, I would like that very much. And uh, we've been speaking with uh, Joseph Grasso, who is the executive chairman, CEO, and president of Golden Arrow Resources. And Joe, I certainly appreciate all your time and all the wisdom and knowledge that you've shared with us today. And I look forward to speaking with you in the not too distant future. Rory, I want to thank you. And if you would permit me, I think that you said that there are symbol on the Toronto Stock Exchange, GRG dot V. GRG dot V. And uh, if I can, uh, if I can, if I can end our conversation. Truly from the bottom of my heart, my heart. That's America. Take care. Thank you, sir. Very much. Good luck. And, th and good luck to okay, you, Joe. Bye -bye. I'll talk with you soon.